safe as hell. The cooks on all of that. In the middle of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> and the new star are creating a stir. Oh, okay, one, two, three. <laughs> Crispina gets serious about getting back to competition. There is a lot of fine tuning. Sometimes I don't even understand what's being tuned. And Milton faces his Why? worst nightmare. He's cut his way through a few of them trees. It doesn't look real nice, eh? This is what I do. The fun and games of the Burnett Camp draft are over. Push! Train! Push! Go, buddy! Back to work for the Jones game. Can't let them have too much time off, otherwise they expect it all the time, mate. <laughs> Milton's picked up a couple of stragglers on the way home from Burnett. No, you're right, you can come with me, I'll tell you what you can do. The teenagers, Bo and Alex, are back from boarding Clean school up. for the weekend. It's no holiday. They're straight into helping in the cattle yard. Fun and hard work all at once, darling, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Come out here and Dad gets us to do a bit of work. In the yards, do a bit, just while we're here. But the regular crew are currently doing more than their fair share. We're a bit short-handed here, right? Trevor the cook's taking a break from Cooley Bar, so the boys have to fend for themselves. Bit of beef for lunch yet, and the work at knee today. Come on in, you come. Shut the door. But the boys might be in luck. Christina's organised something that could make their day. It is going down to Big River Roadhouse to pick up two girls a couple of backpackers. I think they're English and Scottish. A lot of testosterone flies around. It's quite funny to watch, actually. A couple of girls turn up. <laughs> the Joneses often help backpackers out with a bit of work. Come on, darling. The girls will take over the kitchen and feed Milton's army. Hi. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I'm oh, hi, Katie. Nice how are you? you? Hi, I'm Caroline. Hi, how hi. are you? Is that everything? Is that all yours as well? Yeah. Oh. They're not travelling light, but then Katie and Caroline are a long way from home. I've never done anything like this before, ever. We were thinking about a farm, imagining like, you know, like a little farm with a fence <laughs> and some animals. And someone was like, probably you could probably drive for 12 hours and like still be on the same farm. Let's go. I'm nervous. I'm petrified. I'm up for it. Let's go. <laughs> Yee <Yeehaw. Yeehaw. laughs> It seems like only yesterday that another nervous newcomer came to Cooley Bar. Yeah, look at Hover over the van. That one right there? Yeah. It's the best feeling in the world, being up in a chopper. All right, down at left channel. Loosen up on your controls. Yep. Rookie pilot Jeff's learning the importance of safety from his boss, Stephen Grove. See that tree's a bit close? I want yep. you to go that way a bit. If you can get them, especially that age, to respect and appreciate that sort of stuff, then you know that down the track they may be all right. Just a little bit forward. Beautiful. A little bit of a kick at the bottom with your pedals, but you learn that as you go, mate. Just as Jeff touches down, Christina arrives home with the backpackers. here for a good time or a long time. It's all great. They enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, they're very nice, very happy and positive people. So, and they want to do it. Yeah, see how they go. There's another bone there. Oh my God, what, what is this? We just arrived here today and it's very exciting. <laughs> In the middle of absolutely nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> I think we're 250 kilometers from a shop. Well, they're not here to shop. Cooley Bar's all about hard work. 
So as the boys get their minds back on the job, Katie and Caroline are straight into the kitchen. Just spray the oven. Oh. <laughs> but there's a problem. Oh, well, <laughs> they can't even light the oven. Yeah. Is there not a switch somewhere then? <laughs> now, when something needs fixing at Coolie Bar, there's one person everyone turns to Lurch the Handyman. He's heard about the damsels in distress. Don't worry, girls, he's on his way. I still ain't got green light or anything. That's fine, we're all totally under control. As soon as yeah. Lurch, Lurch you here. <laughs> hey, I don't know what you have a night. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> this is a bigger oven than normal. That's definitely going to be up, so. Nah, let's, let's the way I am now. Pump that up. What the heck? That's you, just. No, no, <laughs> what the heck do you girls do? Nothing, I think that should be the oven. No. I need to. Somebody found <laughs> something yeah. here with a power. Yeah, yeah. See, I've got no red light here. Yeah, this is what we need. We need a red light. I don't know if I'm hitting the right button. We've got to go and get them as soon as we can't turn it. Oh, oh, there's a green light. Where? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah! <laughs> Finally, Lurch hits all the white buttons. <laughs> hey, look at that. I'll carry it away. <laughs> the oven's yeah. working. Thank you so much. Next to the hero, stage left. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Hello. How far off the main road is it, do you know? Is that... Milton and Christina are relaxing after right. lunch that when they receive some tonight? alarming news. I don't know where. Mm. Is, is he all right? I don't know. I'll give you a bell when we know where to go on my day. A helicopter has crashed somewhere on Cooley Bar Station. You're down one helicopter. No, we don't know what's caused it yet. It's their worst fear. Milton quickly organises a search party. Yeah, Roger. We'd better go for a look. If things go wrong, you want someone to find you pretty quick. No, no, no worries, I'll get something happening. As Milton heads out, he doesn't know what he'll find. As long as the pilot's safe, worry me when something gets hurt. Just come up here, just further away. Yeah, no worries, mate. A helicopter has crashed on Coolibar Station. Milton and his pilot are searching for the accident set. Just come up that bank that goes up to the hill, eh? Is that not the easiest thing to see once you're in amongst these trees? You could fly straight over the top of a, of a helicopter and not see it, you know? Accidents do happen, yeah. One of my best mates, young fellow that's flown for me for years, has bloody killed himself there two years ago, you know? Then they spot something in the heavy tree growth. I've got it here. Not one of ours, thank Christ. He's cut his way through a few of them trees there. Doesn't look real nice, eh? He's made a bit of a mess of the machine. There's no sign of survivors. You don't see him anyway? We're going to land right there, mate. Then Milton and Chief Pilot Stephen Groves received some welcome news. Yeah, mate, we got them both out about an hour ago. Pilot's OK, the other bloke's a bit worse for wear, but he's all right. All right, no worries. Milton radios Christina. Copy there, Christina. What's happening there? It's the next door neighbours. One fellow was not unconscious for about two hours, and the pilot got out of it. Right, eh? I think they've just run out of power. You see the blades where they've... See those trees up there? Where they've hit there. Look, one, two, three trees. Three limbs. Just too heavy, too hot. Inexperience. They've taken a hell of a hit, eh? It's had that pulled right up, looking for every bit of power he can get. Very lucky to be alive. The chop is a write-off. There's not much else he can do. However, he's had an idea. Bought it for about the cost of salvaging it. So whatever it costs us to get it out of here, that's what it's worth. What do you reckon, mate? After a call to the owner, the deal's done. Milton will clear the wreck for free and keep it for spare parts. When you're operating 30 or 40 of them, you can get a few bits and pieces off them, mate. Not that we're using second-hand parts, but like the engine, you know, you're looking at 30 grand there straight away. There's just one problem. In this dense bush, how are they going to get it out? Good girl. With the chopper drama over, Christina can get back to her plan. I'd like to ride the horses all the time and get prepared and practice. 
She and David Dove finished fourth at their last camp draft. Next time, she wants to win. There you go, now trot forward any point you want. Christina's called in Mark Butsworth, one of the country's top teachers, to help. And I'm going to take him all the way around in a 360 and get him to get some respect. You know, he's going to look for that sort of leading the nose softly. Camp drafting's all about controlling a horse and a cow. Today's first lesson, horsemanship. Mate, trot along now and go somewhere. Yeah. Lead the nose. Go straight. Look where you're going to go. You, you just have a little bit of trouble finding some softness, aren't you? There is a lot of fine tuning. Sometimes I don't even understand what's being tuned because I sort of have to ask again, but yeah. A few steps, just ask a little. She, she needs to try a little harder, a little harder. Mark reckons he can turn Christina into a winner. Right, Rain, go straight, go straight. Oh, okay. Before that, they've got a bit of work to do. Okay, so you've got way too much bend. Is that right? Christina's not the only one under the pump. No, no, you need a reasonable amount of potato. What, like a half potato, half mince? Roughly. Okay. Backpackers Katie and Caroline are about to have a mob of hungry workers roll into the cookhouse. Tonight we have shepherd's pie. Okay. Yummy, yum, yum. Even mince and steak, and I think that's all anybody eats here. Trouble is, they've never cooked for a crowd before. <laughs> One potato each, or...? And Katie has an even darker secret. I've never cooked anything before, so I'm on the duty of peeling potatoes for now, and then I'm going to see how the process all works. You're like sous chef. Yeah. Like yeah, head, head chef. chef. Yeah. Don't have a hat. I've just got a cobra. So, <laughs> go like this. <laughs> peel potatoes. <laughs> yes, chef. Yes, chef. <laughs> <laughs> The truth is they have no idea how much Milton's army can eat. Yeah, no, it looks delightful, doesn't it? <laughs> it's been a day when no one quite knows what's going to happen next at Cooley Bar. Big built-up cities, you can't really get this sort of experience there, so... Young Alex Jones, her Aunt Christy and Rainy from next door have found a badly injured local. I found this duck in the fence this morning. It had twisted its wing nearly off on the fence. A hawk was trying to get at it, so I went and clipped its wing off, hoping it'll survive. It'll only be a swimming duck. I don't <laughs> think it'll be able to fly again. Its flying days are over, but hopefully it can still swim. There's no crocs in there anymore, Alex. Anymore? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Gypsy! 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 No crocs, baby. Gypsy. Just one pesky dog. Gypsy! Gypsy! Come here! Crocodile getting in now, quick! <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> That'll do, Gypsy. That'll do. Now we have a pet duck because he can't fly away anywhere. We know he's here all the time. Feet out and sit down and stop when you stop. Not far away, Christina's chasing animals too. Hold the stop. Hold the stop. Hold the stop. After struggling at first, she and teacher no, Mark have moved to stage two of the training. All right, stop right there. Back up. Back up. When it's fast, he still stops and pulls his nose. He's going to be twice as efficient. What a difference a few hours with an expert can make. Good. I oh, don't be defensive. Wait. Now turn around. Aim over to your right, over to your right, over to your right. <laughs> Whoa, back off. All right. Yeah, she's going great. She's got a fair bit of natural feel and talent anyway, so uh, it's pretty easy to mould somebody a little bit that's like that in the beginning. The next camp draft is just a couple of weeks away, and Christina's now good to go. Yeah, today was really good to have Mark up here, and oh, I've never done one of Mark's schools before. He's just, yeah, he's great. Learned a lot from him and it was really good. That's what I was looking for right there. How is she, Neely? Oh, a bit of a mess. A bit of a mess, all right. Come on, Milton, you're going to hook onto this. Milton's having problems salvaging the crash chopper, so he's called in his chief mechanic, Neil. This cowling's all right, eh? Nearly hasn't been cracked. Oh, a little bit there. The first step is to strip it right down. Is it on? I doubt. So, yeah, it's all. And this you can use bits and pieces, mm -hmm. But while the men pull the wreck to pieces, little Milton's doing his best to put it all back together. I think this doesn't fit on here. You can't cut it. 
broken. Yeah. Bit of a crashed helicopter, isn't it? Finally, the chopper's ready to move. Got a bit of extra rope to tie that on, nearly. And Neil's figured out how to get it out of this dense bush. He's on the gateway! Milton clears a path to make it safe for the chopper overhead. He's up. The wind's getting up too. It's now 30 knots here now. The wind's a big factor. The wreck will swing dangerously when it's lifted. Starting to come from every direction now. The last thing Milton wants is another accident. Be careful. Oh, yeah, shit. Milton's crew is trying to salvage a chopper wreck for spare parts. He's flying all over the place, the lane's hanging off But the wind gusts are making it a dangerous operation. Probably have to clear the trees a little bit more, mate. Clear to the south a little bit. You've got a fair sort of a, a gust of wind from that south, southeast there, mate. Chief pilot Stephen Groves tries to guide the other pilot to safety. Got a bit of tension on that line there now, mate. Not flying good, but I think it's the blades that are strapped on the side. Pull on around, it should be flying a bit better than that, mate. She's looking good, mate. Good job. She's going real good, eh? Meanwhile, the two Miltons are waiting to load the chopper onto a flat top. There you You can play up there, look. Little Milton had better clear the decks. Because the salvage team has arrived. Oh, look out, that's what I thought. Just hanging here. Yeah, if that drops, yeah, the whole thing will fall on top of you. Yeah. The wreck might be safely on the back of the truck. Can that come down, then? Yep. But it's about to do a bit of damage. Oh, f***ing oh, your pants. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> What's happened? I split me dags. <laughs> I better pull up now, I haven't got a spare pair, I haven't got underpants either. Well, there's no gain without a bit of pain. I think we'll have to get a new one. I think we'll have to get a new one. Why is that? It's a bit broken, isn't it, eh? Before they head home, Milton decides to mark the spot where good luck smiled upon a fellow chopper pilot. Come back here, 20 years time, wonder if it'll be still there. Might come back here one day and see it, eh? When you're an old man, and you say, geez, I was there. Most people at Cooley Bar feel glad to be alive. Crispy vegetables, good food, a <laughs> few dramas, but we made it through. We're good. But in the kitchen, backpackers Katie and Caroline aren't counting their blessings just yet. We've got two shepherd pie in the oven, cooking, and they actually look quite nice. Shepherd's pie for a bunch of hungry cowboys, eh? It's actually three minutes till we to ring our bell and we're going to be able to ring it on time. Like a victory sign. It's time to let the boys know. <laughs> Dinner is served. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> Let's hope their cooking is a bigger hit. <laughs> because the boss has just arrived. What are you having? Shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie and veggies. Is it better than that other cookbook? Better <laughs> looking, I know that. <laughs> What's going on? How are you? Well, we started oh. the day cattle mustering. Would you like some? <laughs> I'm going to try a bit. Yeah. You've got to work out what the cooks are like, eh? <laughs> he ends it as a food critic. Mmm. Probably English <laughs> shepherd's pie, eh? <laughs> That's not a bad feed. Looks like the girls are here to stay. I'll see you for breakfast. Bye. 6 a.m. Bye. <laughs> We've managed to pull it off. Yeah. Can I just say We're all good. Bye -bye. We're all good. We're all good. <laughs> so, guys, uh, how's the food then? Good. Excellent. Good. 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 Good.
Thank you very much. No, nobody's bye, bye. Bye, bye. The fellows, well, they're just happy to enjoy some good time. <laughs> no match for your mum? No. Oh. Good work. And some good company. <laughs> But when we were mummies, you know, we would be amazing cooks as well. Probably. You want to be I'm a mum, do you? I do want to be a mum. Yeah, your heart's in a baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only if you marry me, though, so I can stay in Australia. <laughs>